name is Betsy and I'm with the Urbana Regional Library. Today, I want to share with you one of my favorite cookbooks from the winter season, Betty Crocker's Soups and Stews. If you're like me, you might have grown up with a cookbook that looks just like this, the Betty Crocker Picture Cookbook. So first, let's get a little history about Betty herself. In 1921, a milling company by the name of Washburn Crosby worked with a businessman by the name of Bruce Barton to create the Betty Crocker image. They felt that the name Betty was an all-American name that housewives would feel comfortable writing to with their concerns about cooking. She was immortalized by Marjorie Houston. She was a home economist and a businesswoman who eventually became the voice of Betty Crocker on the radio. In 1928, Washburn Crosby joined with other milling companies to form the large brand known as General Mills. So by 1950, cookbooks featuring Betty Crocker were in high demand. This particular cookbook was the first cookbook to feature pictures on the inside that show you what your final item should look like. So there's an example of, I believe, some creamy scalloped potatoes and ham. This particular cookbook was written by a nutritionist at the time named Agnes White Tizard. In 2005, the 10th edition of this cookbook came out, but they began to realize that people needed more than just one large cookbook. So they began to release smaller cookbooks, like our Soups and Stews cookbook here. One of the best parts about this cookbook is that it is a ring binder. So when you lay it flat on your countertop, the pages don't turn. And very traditional to Betty Crocker's cookbooks, we have an entire section on how to make bread, as well as how to make your own broths. Bone broth, chicken broth, even fish broth. We have dessert soups, and then we have, of course, my particular favorite, an Italian beef and ravioli stew. All of these are sure to warm you up during the winter months, so I suggest you check this out from your local library. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah and I work here at the Urbana Regional Library and my favorite cookbook for winter is called Salad Samurai by Terry Hope Romero. Now as the months get colder and we're nearing the holidays, we tend to crave heartier foods and more comfort meals. Um, and oddly enough, the recipes included in Salad Samurai fulfill that craving. Even your most anti-salad family members will find these recipes to be filling, flavorful, and hearty. All the recipes featured in this cookbook are vegan and vegetarian friendly, yet they don't require those complex or hard to find ingredients. The cookbook also includes recipes for vegan salad dressings, my favorite being the back to the ranch dressing and it includes salads and recipes for every season. For winter, recipes include sesame noodles at the dojo, a classic Caesar salad, and a ginger beet and lentil salad. Salad Samurai is the perfect cookbook to help you elevate those boring salad recipes, to impress your vegan family and friends at the dinner table, or to kickstart that New Year's resolution of going dairy-free or eating more greens. Like the cover says, you don't have to be vegan to love these recipes. So be sure to check out Salad Samurai at your local branch and start mastering your salad skills today. Hi, I'm Sandra and I work at the Urbana Regional Library. I grew up in a family that loves to cook and enjoy meals together. From an early age, my mom taught me how to follow recipes and to this day, we love learning new things, we love finding new meals, and we have even been teaching my nieces and nephews how to cook together. I wanted to show you Magnolia Table by Joanna Gaines. This book is full of delicious recipes, including our favorite, which is the lemon pie. Very easy to make, and everybody has enjoyed it, from the one-year-old all the way to the, well, I won't embarrass my dad. I heard you to check, I encourage you to check out Magnolia Table, and I just learned there is a Magnolia Tables Volume 2 as well. Enjoy, and enjoy the great recipes that Joanna Gaines has put together for you. Hello, my name is Marie from Urbana Regional Library, and this winter, my favorite go-to cookbook is the Ultimate Soup Cookbook from Reader's Digest. 
And let me tell you why I love this. Winter time calls for soup. It's a wonderful dinner with good crusty bread and a salad. It's a quick lunch as a leftover. It could even be breakfast. And one of the things I love about this book is it allows for whether are you going for the quick version, you need to be able to um, throw together some canned stock and a few vegetables and have this ready in a half an hour, or are you going for the old-fashioned version where you're going to, you know, add in the soup, add in the meat, and then your vegetables over a two to three hour period, or are you using a slow cooker? Whichever way you're doing it, whichever way you prefer to do it generally, or whichever way it works for you that particular day, this book accommodates for that, giving you the same result with at least three different ways. My favorites in here are a beef vegetable soup. And the next thing that I want to go for in here is the New England clam chowder. I think at this point I'm ready. There are also really great tips in this book, just little things that you should do just to make all of your soups um, come out better. For example, sauteing your onions before you start, browning the meat before you before you really get going. All these things will make make it so that you, when you are finished and you are looking at this awesome pot of soup, see the chunky meats and vegetables and smell the aroma and know that this was worth it. So. That's my call for this winter, the ultimate soup cookbook from the Reader's Digest. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Diane. I wanted to share with you my favorite winter cookbook, which is the Keto Instant Pot Cookbook. Now, I love this cookbook for many different reasons. First of all, if you're new to keto, all the recipes in here are keto friendly. If you're new to Instant Pot, all the recipes in here you can do in your Instant Pot. And if you don't have an Instant Pot, all of these recipes come with a slow cooker recipe. So you don't even need an Instant Pot to make these awesome recipes. Now, there's everything in here from nutrition information, how to use an Instant Pot, what the accessories are for, and then some morning breakfast recipes, lunch, dinner. It's broken down by proteins and different meats. So whatever you're looking for, you can find. Um, my favorite recipe is the pot sticker bowls. And if you've ever been to P.F. Chang's or even Cheesecake Factory, they have like um, an Asian pot sticker lettuce wrap and it tastes just like this. It's delicious. Um, the other thing, every recipe has a picture. So sometimes when you're making something, especially desserts, you're not sure what exactly it should look like. This. Um, cookbook shows you everything that they make. And my favorite, favorite section is the dessert. So there's a cheesecake in here that's phenomenal. You saw some almond fudge. And um, I also love soda, but because of all the sugar, I try not to drink any soda. But there's a ginger ale recipe in here as well as a root beer recipe. So you're using straight ginger with seltzer and a sweetener substitute absolutely the best ginger ale I've ever had. Um, so that is why this is my favorite winter cookbook almost all year, but in the winter because all the recipes are warm. But you can find this in our library. We have several different copies. Again, you don't have to be on keto because there are a lot of just regular meat and egg dishes in here. A lot of the keto is um, bread substitute or sugar substitute. So you don't have to be on keto to love this and you don't have to have an instant pot. But if you do, then this is a perfect book for you. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the Keto Instant Pot Cookbook by Maria Emmerich. Take care. Good morning, friends. My name is Courtney Ward. I work at the Urbana Regional Library, and today I'm showing you my winter cookbook pick um, that all of our patrons can get through our FCPL catalog. Um, I chose I Hate Kale by Tucker Shaw. I found this cookbook earlier this year when I was adopting a much more vegetarian diet, um, and I needed some ideas on how to get these superfoods like kale um, into my everyday eating habits. Um, 
And this book really showed me not only how to incorporate them into my diet, but actually how to make them taste better, um, which is huge for a lot of superfoods because most people just don't know how to cook them properly. And this book really shows you not only how to shop and take care of it, but also how to cook it properly so it tastes better. Um, one tip that you'll find in here, it actually shows you how to massage it properly, um, which makes it taste a thousand times better. And it's actually a much more tender than its typical normal self, a very bland and um, bitter. As you can see, most of the recipes in here, they're very simple, very easy to do. Um, they don't break the bank and most people actually have recipes for a lot of these suggestions that their family has passed down or are very traditional and it just sort of kind of gives you some insight as well as some inspiration to just to try different things and see if they work and to tweak them or um, try something else as you go about but it's a great way to incorporate this superfood into your everyday diet diet that's very seasonal for winter and if you enjoy this book i also recommend its sister cookbook called i hate tofu so check it out and tell us if you like it or if you have any suggestions of yourself that are similar to it. Thanks and have a great day.